Can you explain Christopher Steele's calculation talking with congressional investigators at this point after having already spoken with Mueller's team? I think that it has a lot to do with him feeling like he has nothing to hide, right? I mean, he's already spoken to Mueller's team. He really wants to share the information that came out when he was researching all of the president's alleged ties to Russia, the president's campaign team's alleged, alleged ties to Russia. Um, and, you know, he obviously had concerns when he was researching this last summer that this was very, very serious. He actually brought it to the FBI at one point because he wanted them to investigate it. So now I think that he really wants to get it in front of Congress so that they can make informed decisions about how to move forward. Okay, so looking at this article that you wrote, you break it down in terms of timelines. You talk about what was written by Christopher Steele in the dossier in terms of timing and then what was actually going on in the news or on Capitol Hill. What are the coincidences that you came across in, as you tried to corroborate all this? So there were a number of coincidences, and, and that's a very generous uh, way to put it. Um, beginning in June, when Christopher Steele started to write this dossier up through December, um, one of the biggest coincidences that we can see comparing the two is that Christopher Steele wrote in late June that the Trump campaign had been receiving a regular flow of intelligence about Hillary Clinton from the uh, Kremlin. Now, we know now that... You said that, for five years that was going on. Right. So far, obviously, years. to a campaign. Okay. Yes. Yes. And we know now that that's actually, you know, in the beginning of June, the Trump campaign, high-level members of the Trump campaign did meet with the with Natalia Veselinskaya, the Russian lawyer, a Russian lobbyist, on the promise of receiving more information about Hillary Clinton. So that's something that kind of that lines up and is worth further investigation. Then we also know that there was an amendment to the GOP platform on Ukraine that was actually altered um, right before the Republican National Convention kicked off in July. Mm -hmm. The dossier said that, you know, in, in exchange for WikiLeaks publishing the first set of hacked DNC emails, in exchange for Russia essentially leaking these emails to WikiLeaks, the campaign agreed to sideline Russian intervention in Ukraine as a campaign issue. Now, we know that this, this platform was essentially weakened a lot. It was actually out of step with GOP orthodoxy at the time with regard to sending lethal weapons to Ukraine. Um, a lot of Republicans at the time were advocating for this, were advocating for, in order to fend off Russian aggression, for us to send, you know, these lethal weapons to the Ukrainians. So the fact that this was kind of gutted um, during the Republican National Convention. And then three weeks later, we saw that the emails were, in fact, released by WikiLeaks. It's just a very, very interesting turn of events. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, looking at all this, you've got Congress and then you've got Mueller's teams, and, and they may have different goals. But why do you suspect Christopher Steele spoke with the special counsel's team first, as opposed to going to Capitol Hill and speaking with congressional investigators? Robert Mueller may have subpoenaed him. We really don't know. Um, you know, Robert Mueller's investigation in many ways is a lot more, I would say, you know, uh, in terms of criminal charges, it's a lot more probably secret than the Congressional Intelligence Committees um, are operating. And he perhaps felt like he maybe had more of a, a reason to speak with Mueller sooner than the Congressional Committees. That being said, um, Mueller, or Christopher Steele and his allies have pushed back on this idea that he was ever resistant to speaking with Congress in the first place. He told reporters recently, um, or sources close to him told reporters recently, that he has never um, not wanted to speak to Congress about this. It was just a matter of kind of who um, reached out to him first and who seemed more serious about getting to the bottom of the allegations made in this dossier, which apparently Robert Mueller was, given the FBI's past relationship with Christopher Steele. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.